Caroline spent two hours spinning around in front of the mirror at the wedding salon. The dress looked magnificent on her slender figure, but she was very critical of her choice of outfit. After all, the most important day of her life was coming. It's too flashy like a queen's dress, but I want to be a princess, she declared. And this one is too modest, not grand enough. Finally, after many attempts, she found it the perfect dress. It was delicate and beautiful. At that moment, Caroline realized how happy she was. In two weeks, she would marry the person closest and dearest to her heart. Caroline was 22 years old and came from a wealthy family. From an early age, she was attached to her parents who tried to give her everything. The girl received an excellent education, good manners and upbringing. Perhaps that's why her father's money, he was a prominent entrepreneur and the city didn't spoil her. She grew up intelligent, cultured and kind. Listen, daughter, go to law school. You'll become a first class lawyer and then I'll open the door to my business for you. When the time comes, I'll have to pass on my business to your reliable hands, even if they're not male. But you're smart, responsible and have a business mindset. You'll manage her father instructed her. If only he knew how much Caroline hated the seemingly boring legal science. She was drawn to art and she wanted to be a sculptor, photographer or an architect. However, to please her father, she enrolled in law school and forced herself to study those dull law articles. In her third year of study, her soul could not take it anymore and she begged dad, this is not for me. I won't be able to do something I hate for my whole life. I'll fail. His daughter's sincere request melted Mr. Nordling's heart, even though he realized he was losing his only chance to pass the business to a relative. But his love for his daughter was stronger than his personal ambitions. Caroline quit law school and enrolled in the humanities department, majoring in art. That was her element, an eternal flight of fantasy. Her passion for beauty was so unrestrained that while still in college, she became a photographer. With her father's help, the girl acquired a small space and equipped it as a photo studio. It was here that she met Kevin, her future husband. The young man, well-dressed and handsome, popped into the first photo studio he saw on his way to work one summer morning. Caroline's exams were over at the university and now there was complete freedom until autumn. This meant that she could enjoy her favorite activity all day long. Miss, can I have a passport photo? It won't take long, will it ask the stranger? No, only about 10 minutes Caroline replied happily, although this was far from the most exciting thing she could create in the world of photography. Yeah, it's ready Caroline handed the young man an envelope. Well, I seem to look pretty good, the guy said cheerfully. Caroline couldn't help but smile and notice the intense gaze of the green-eyed man on her. Am I funny? Asked the guy and continued conversation. You, on the other hand, are not funny. You're gorgeous. The girl smiled even more after such words. I'm Kevin. And what's your name? The guy seized the moment to introduce himself. My name's Caroline, answered Caroline to her surprise. She usually never introduced herself to clients, but something came over her today. Maybe it was an unusual morning, or the man was too attractive. Nice to meet you, Caroline, Kevin smiled. Would you mind if I drop by sometimes to chat about this and that? Yes, of course, come by, Caroline replied. All day and evening, the girl caught herself thinking about Kevin and wanting him to come back to the photo studio. She didn't even realize that Kevin's thoughts were also occupied with this. It seemed that someone from above had stretched an invisible thread between them that could not be broken. Kevin couldn't resist and visited Caroline again the next morning and the next day and the day after. Both of them understood that an inexplicable feeling attracted them to each other. Later, they called it love. A year of beautiful dates, travels, tender kisses and strong embraces flew by unnoticed. On the anniversary of their meeting, Kevin proposed to Caroline. She gladly accepted. Before, she always thought that happiness was some abstract concept invented by unhappy people, but now she realized that it was not true. Happiness was in the love of a close person, and this person was next to her. Kevin managed not only to find the key to Caroline's heart, but also to approach her parents. The young man was 25 years old. He was well-educated and worked as a chief accountant in one of the major commercial firms. It was impressive that Kevin came from an ordinary and far from prosperous family and achieved everything in life himself. When Mr. Nordling met his daughter's chosen one, he cheered up. This is who I can pass on my business to later. Pleasant wedding preparations flew by and the long awaited day came for Caroline and Kevin the wedding day. Finally, it was the turn of Caroline's snowy, airy, dreamlike dress and Kevin's stylish dark blue suit. The day was filled with joy and tenderness. The young couple experienced excitement and a sense of boundless happiness when they were announced husband and wife. 
The wedding took place in Caroline and Kevin's favorite vacation spot, a fashionable mansion not far from the city. The celebration was grand congratulations, music, jokes, cheerful laughter and gifts continued until late in the evening. It seemed that the holiday would never end. Caroline and Kevin were already dreaming of being alone. Let's run away from everyone, Kevin smiled. Let's go, Caroline replied resolutely. As they entered the room designated for their first wedding night, they gasped at Kevin's request. The room was unusually and beautifully decorated, exceeding expectations. And I have another gift for you, Kevin said, pulling an envelope from his jacket pocket. It contained tickets and a tourist voucher for two for their honeymoon. Kevin, you're a wizard, exclaimed a delighted Caroline. I have a gift for you, too. Close your eyes and don't open them until I say you can whispered Caroline to her beloved. She knew that Kevin dreamed of learning scuba diving. In the gift box, the girl put indispensable swimming accessories and a certificate for a year of training from a professional. She put the box on the closet shelf so that Kevin wouldn't find out about the surprise in advance. If she could have looked into the future for even a second, she wouldn't have made this fatal mistake. But alas, standing on a chair to reach the box, Caroline accidentally stepped on the hem of her dress. Her foot tangled in numerous decorative folds. She lost her balance and fell, hitting her head. A strong, dull thud was heard. Kevin shuddered with his whole body, not understanding what had happened in the first few seconds. In the next moment, he saw Caroline lying next to the closet with blood stains on her head, dress, and floor. She wasn't moving. Horror chilled Kevin's insides. He couldn't contain his emotional outburst and shouted as loud as he could. Relatives and some guests who hadn't left yet rushed to the cry. The rest was like a fog, the astonished faces of people who rushed into the room, an ambulance, paramedics, a stretcher, and the hand of his beloved girl whom he held tightly. Hatred towards himself grew stronger. He blamed himself for listening to Caroline when she asked him to close his eyes for not feeling that something terrible was going to happen. How could this be? He had always believed that there was a strong invisible thread between them, so why did it break so suddenly at the first trial? What if Caroline didn't survive because she had hit her head? Kevin was going crazy with these thoughts and pushed them away. The doctors did everything possible, but the patient fell into a coma. Caroline's and Kevin's parents convinced the doctors to let the young man stay in the ward with his beloved wife. He practically didn't leave her bedside and even slept holding Caroline's hand. Every day, he prayed as selflessly as women usually do. Men usually feel embarrassed, but not Kevin. He wanted to return his beloved at all costs, and a miracle happened. Early in the morning, Kevin suddenly felt Caroline's hand tremble and move in his hand. Doctor, nurse, she's awake, shouted Kevin, running out into the corridor. A moment later, the young woman slowly opened her eyes. Caroline, my dear Kevin, wanted to hug her. Kevin, please calm down. You're like a possessed person. Leave the ward. I have to examine the patient doctor, Duncan said sternly. Kevin had nothing left to do but leave the ward. The half hour spent in the corridor seemed like an eternity to him. He was waiting for the doctor like a hero who would surely heal his beloved Caroline. When the door opened, he was ready to hug the doctor if he gave him good news. Doctor. Duncan. How is she? Will she live? Kevin asked anxiously, anticipating the doctor. Young man, don't worry so much now. I can say with complete confidence that yes, she will live, but it will take a lot of time for recovery. A cranial injury is not a scratch or a bruise. Be patient, the doctor reassured him. Can I see her? Kevin burst back into the room. I'm sorry, but she won't be able to talk or show you the emotions you want to see right now. And she definitely shouldn't be overwhelmed by stress. You've already spent too much time with the patient in this hospital. When she's transferred to a regular ward, you can visit her there, the doctor said in an artificially serious tone. Doctor. Duncan, just for five minutes, please. I need to see her eyes, Kevin pleaded. And the doctor couldn't resist the young man's powerful pressure. My love, I'm happy you're alive. Everything will be fine now. Look at me, please, Kevin whispered, kissing Caroline's hand. The girl stopped her incomprehensible gaze on Kevin for a few seconds, then abruptly turned her face away. Caroline, Caroline, turn around, he repeated. Kevin, I've told you that the patient is not ready to communicate yet and your five minutes are long over. Let's go outside, finally go home and rest. Your wife will be under the care of doctor's doctor. Duncan reassured him. Kevin obeyed and trudged home dejectedly, not to their new apartment, no, he couldn't stay there without Caroline, but his old place, where he lived before he met her. He paced the rooms like a wounded animal, unable to understand why Caroline had turned away from him so rudely. 
Yes, the doctor said it wasn't time for emotions yet, but Kevin felt something was wrong, as if the invisible thread connecting them had been severed. Unfortunately, Kevin's premonitions proved true. Caroline began to recover and slowly, step by step, return to life. But, to Kevin's horror, she didn't remember him. She forgot him. She forgot their love. She remembered her parents and other relatives, talked to them, but not Kevin. The woman even asked her father, who is the man who comes to see me. He's your husband, Kevin. Don't you remember him? But Caroline just shook her head. Dad, I'm not married, and I'm not interested in that right now. I need to finish law school and get a good job, the young woman said without a shadow of doubt. With this statement, Caroline plunged her father into shock. He came to his senses after a few seconds. Daughter, you haven't been studying at the law school for a year. Your soul was drawn to beauty, so you enrolled in a university in the art department, mister. Nordling tried to evoke memories in Caroline, but it was all in vain. The girl had completely forgotten the last three years of her life, a time when she had drastically changed, becoming a different person. Doctor, how is this possible? What should we do now? exclaimed mister. Nordling and Kevin in horror. Yes, it's possible. Partial amnesia is one of the consequences of a traumatic brain injury. She came out of a coma, which is already a miracle, and her memory may or may not be restored. Time will tell, the doctor replied significantly. Three months later, the woman was discharged from the hospital. She was in a good mood and chatted happily with her parents and cousin Melanie. However, when it came to Kevin, she treated him like someone trying to be friends with her, just like she would with a maid, a security guard, or a driver. This was like a knife to Kevin's heart, but he didn't give up and decided to do everything to restore Caroline's memory. He intended to help her remember him and their love, no matter what. Kevin went all in and offered Caroline to live in an apartment bought for them as a wedding gift. The apartment had two bedrooms, and everyone would live in their own room. There she is, my Caroline, so close yet so far away. How can she feel nothing while being next to me? Just four months ago, we were a passionate couple and couldn't spend a day without each other. And now Kevin thought, oh, why did I say we were? I still love her as much as before, so I don't have the right to give up. And he didn't give up. He continued to make new attempts to win back his girlfriend. He showed her photos of the wedding and the celebration, but Caroline looked at them indifferently, as if it didn't happen to her. Kevin was surprised every time. How could it be forgotten? It's you, Caroline. Remember how you chose your wedding dress for a long time? You promised to love me in sorrow, and Joy Kevin said, hopeful that she would remember something. He told her about their wedding with deep emotion and kept asking, do you remember? Do you remember? But nothing touched Caroline's soul, and she was only angry with Kevin. Why are you nagging me? I don't remember anything. I'm tired of it. I don't even understand why I'm here and why I have to live in this apartment with you instead of at home with my parents, Caroline said. I'm sorry, Caroline. I didn't mean to be annoying, Kevin replied, sighing sadly. Despite constantly trying to please his wife, it didn't bring back her lost memories. She became irritable and uncontrollable. Everything made her angry, from the apartment's decor to the color of her cup. One day, when Kevin came home from work, he found Caroline, I'm leaving to my parents. I can't listen to your suffering and love stories anymore. I don't remember you, and that's it, Caroline said confidently. Thirty minutes later, she left, slamming the door loudly, and it seemed to Kevin that this door had closed on his heart, which would never open again. Kevin wanted to scream from helplessness, but his voice disappeared somewhere. He had lost Caroline. On a sleepless night, Kevin wondered what he had done wrong to deserve such treatment from Caroline, but he couldn't find any reasons. Don't give up, don't give up, his inner voice cried. For a moment, he pictured Caroline's face in her wedding dress, so tender, beloved, and dear. No, I won't give up. No way. We just have to wait it out. Caroline's parents were upset that she had left Kevin, but there was nothing to be done. It was her choice, although it was wrong. One morning, to everyone's surprise, Caroline announced that she wanted to continue her studies at the law school. But daughter, you left there a long time ago. You didn't like it there, and it's too late to recover after such a long time, mister. Nordling tried to dissuade her. Well, daddy, you have so many acquaintances and connections. Someone will help me. I just have to continue my education and get a degree Caroline pleaded with him. In front of the prominent businessman that her father was, all the doors in the city were open, or practically all of them. The school door was no exception. Caroline was accepted, but the first few months of studying were so difficult that she impulsively ran away. Caroline, why are you putting me in such a difficult position? How do I look in people's eyes now? They did me a huge favor of taking you in, her father said, hurt in his voice. 
Dad, tell me, how was it before? Did I ever quit law school? Caroline unexpectedly asked. Daughter, did you remember something, mister? Nordling was surprised, hoping for a miracle. No, Dad, it's just that at the subconscious level, I feel like I've already experienced the feeling of making the wrong decision, although it was just a feeling, mister. Nordling was delighted. It was a small step towards returning her memory. Caroline dropped out of law school again, where she was reinstated after losing her memory, and decided to live separately from her parents, renting an apartment in the city. After a short time, she became interested in sculpture and photography. Caroline decided to return to studying art. She once again felt that this was her element, her space where she felt comfortable. Dad, let's buy a small space where I can work on photos and sculptures, Caroline said. Mr. Nordling was overjoyed at such a turn of events. After all, his daughter, just like before, was changing her lifestyle. She gradually became the one who had once met Kevin and fell in love with him. Caroline, my dear, we already have a space waiting for its owner. From that moment on, Caroline's life began anew. She pursued her favorite hobby. Her hands created sculptures and beautiful photographs. The girl organized photo shoots and exhibitions. Caroline's work did not go unnoticed. She gained her own regular clients, admirers of her revived talent. People say that love comes suddenly. So suddenly and unexpectedly, a real miracle happened in Caroline's life. On an ordinary evening, she was going through old things and found a pledge of fidelity and love to a young man, written in her own hand a year ago. On the card, she swore she would always love him and marry Kevin. Caroline couldn't remember when or how it happened, but she felt what she felt at that moment, trembling joy and happiness that needed to be cherished and never lost. Her hands reached for the phone and she dialed the number Kevin had left when she left him. Kevin, do you want to meet and talk? I have something for you, Caroline said mysteriously. Yes, give me the address, I'll come, Kevin replied. How surprised he was when he heard the same address where the photo studio was, where he and Caroline had met before. Kevin firmly decided not to ask any more questions like, do you remember or not? He would win Caroline's heart for the second time. When he walked into the studio, there was his Caroline, the same one he saw here for the first time, beautiful, sunny, smiling, gentle. Kevin, hi, sorry for disturbing. Look what I found. Caroline handed Kevin a card with the pledge. He smiled and said, now look what I have and gave Caroline another piece of paper. It was the same card with the same words as Caroline's only written in Kevin's hand. How did you know I found this? Caroline asked in amazement. I didn't need to guess. This pledge is always with me, Kevin replied, and a moment later he added, I invite you on a date tonight. Will you come? Caroline blushed and barely whispered, yes. Kevin was happy. He had never lost hope of reviving their love. The man decided to invite her to the places that had once helped the beginnings of their relationship. Caroline didn't remember these places, but she felt pleasant, warm emotions. It was like watching an old but favorite movie again. One day, Kevin took Caroline to the shores of the lake where they had decided to swim every month after hearing the story of eternal youth. Caroline remembered that April when the water in the lake was still cold, but the young people still swam and ran to warm up in the car. Now in October, they just walked along the beach and Caroline reached out her frozen hands to Kevin and he warmed them with his breath. Soon, Kevin and Caroline started dating every day. Caroline didn't have time to understand when it happened, but she thought about Kevin and always looked forward to the evening. After a little more time, they started a life path together again. What it would be like depended on them, but it's hoped that love would forever reside in their hearts. Take care and love each other under any circumstances, no matter what happens, and then happiness will always be with you.